Hello, it's Dr. Rhonda Johnson. Today is Saturday, July 11th, 2020. And today I'm gonna to be talking about how COVID-19 is very contagious. I'm gonna be talking about asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic spread. I'm gonna be explaining the concept of a viral load and also what we need to be doing to be thinking of the next wave. So we know that the hallmark of COVID-19 is its contagiousness. In one of my previous talks, I shared that the virus here in the United States and Europe has undergone a mutation that's different than the one that was in China. And the virus that we have here in the United States and Europe is 10 times more contagious than the SARS-CoV-2 virus that infected China. So we're dealing with a very contagious virus genetically. Now, most people nowadays have no idea how they got infected when they're doing contact tracing. People really don't know, but Asymptomatic spread and pre-symptomatic spread are now believed to be how more than 50% of people with COVID-19 are getting infected. Now, just to refresh, asymptomatic infection refers to people who are infected that never had any symptoms of COVID-19, but they can transmit the virus. Pre-symptomatic refers to people who are infected and may only be showing mild symptoms. And again, asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic individuals are thought to be responsible for at least half of the COVID-19 spread, which is why the virus has been so difficult to contain. We know that in five short months, this SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus has infected over 5 million people across the world, and it continues to spread rapidly. The incubation period for COVID-19 is thought to be extend to 14 days, with a median of four to five days from exposure to symptom onset. And we know that the virus can be spread through very, very casual interpersonal contact with less than 15 minutes of contact exposure, especially during indoor settings. Now, I want to switch to talking about the concept of the viral load because this is related to the subject. Viral load, we've heard about this with HIV, we've heard about this with hepatitis C viruses, mostly. But viral load has to do with a measure of the number of viral virus particles. It's the amount of virus present once a person has been infected and the virus has had a time to replicate in your cells. So with most viruses, the more viral load you have, the worse off you are in terms of your outcomes. So the scientific evidence suggests an association of the viral dose that you get infected with, with the severity of the disease. So the more times that you are exposed, the more virus particles you get infected with the more virus that gets inside your body and replicates and the higher your viral load. So for example, someone who in the course of their day, let's say someone, you know, yesterday I shared an infographic that talked about high risk, moderate risk and low risk. So let's just say a person starts off their day by going to the gym. Then they go and get their hair done. And you go get a haircut or they go to their hairdresser. Then they go and eat at a buffet. And then they go 
to a um, indoor mall and do some shopping. Well, before COVID-19, that would have been a very normal occurrence for most people. But now these are high risk events, which increases your risk of infection. And again, if you're exposed to someone who is asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic, you've just had multiple opportunities to get infected with COVID-19. And anywhere between four to five days after you've been infected to up to 11 days, you'll start showing symptoms of COVID-19. Now, many people think that if you get through the first week that you'll be fine. But it turns out that scientists and medical doctors know that the risk of progression of COVID-19 seems to be greatest during the second week after the onset of symptoms. You know, what we learned from China is that there are three forms of manifestation of this virus, mild to asymptomatic, uh, critical, and severe. And I have that backwards, mild to asymptomatic, severe, and critical. And again, it has to do with whether or not you can stay home, whether you need to go to the hospital, and whether you need to be on life-sustaining support. So if you get COVID and you're being treated at home and you get through your first week, don't think you're out of the woods, particularly if you have pre-existing conditions that are known to be linked with more severity. Stay in contact with your doctor because the second week after symptom onset seems to be the time that most people go on to develop severe complications. And that can include pneumonia, low oxygen states, uh, sepsis or septic shock where the blood is overwhelmed with infection, heart problems, heart rhythm disturbances, acute kidney injury, blood clots, gastrointestinal bleeding, and a whole lot of other problems. So, as I said in the beginning, this talk was going to be about how contagious it is, defining asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic spread, explaining what a viral load is, and that all has to do with getting COVID-19, and thinking about the next wave. So, you know, if you listen to some of the experts, like Dr. Fauci, and he talks about the first wave and thinking about the second wave when we have combined uh, winter viruses like influenza, you know, it's, it's clear we have a long way to go with this pandemic. And it's time to begin to think about preparing for the long run here what the upcoming months may hold for us, what we have to prepare to survive the next wave of this pandemic. So be thinking about this, folks. What do you need to do to prepare? What should you get done now? What do you need to take care of? You know, reflecting upon the first few months of this pandemic, what would you have done differently? And if so, now's the time to be doing it. Uh, what do you need to um, take care of? You got a dental appointment, you got medical appointments, you need to get your kids vaccinated, et cetera. Be thinking about that. You know, the impact of COVID-19 outbreak has been massive and it's going to continue until there's a vaccine that's widely available. Most experts, if they're honest, they're gonna tell you that we're gonna be looking at another year or two before most people have the opportunity to have a vaccine that's safe and effective. So prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for the long run. Prepare yourself for another one to two years of this life-changing global pandemic. 
This is Dr. Rhonda Johnson. My views are my own. My only attempt is to help inform and to help us save lives. Have a blessed day.